the planter pass is the most important pass you will make across that field. I'm Colin, this is Aaron. Planting early within reason, guys. We're not talking about February and March. Planting at the right depth, at the right seeding rates can get that seed off to a good start. Planting date and depth are one of the easiest to apply and by far the least expensive input decision we farmers make each year. Let's talk about planting dates as it pertains to corn. 21-year multiple location data suggests planting in the second half of April sets our crop up for the most yield potential. By show of hands, who wants to go back to April and May of 2019? Anyone? Anyone? I didn't think so. This is an actual picture from 2019 of us trying to plant PFR plots that year. Lots of corn got planted in June that year, and outside of slightly higher moistures, many areas pulled off average to above average yields. But is this the rule or the exception? Anyone? Anyone? It's definitely the exception. On average, we lose yield potential as we push planting dates back further throughout the season. Believe it or not, the yield penalty for delaying soybean planting may be even greater than on corn. 24-year multi-location data shows that the yield penalty for delaying soybean planting follows the same trends as we see in corn. That second half of April is going to be our ideal time, and we lose potential from there. Early soybean planting is a critical factor in driving soybean yields. I know you may be thinking, hold up! I've had plenty of good soybean yields planted in May and June. Heck, I've even had some pretty good double crops planted in July. But soybean yields correlate to nodes per acre, and not necessarily plants per acre. The sooner we get those beans in, the more time they can spend in that vegetative growth stage before flowering. This allows for more node growth, which increases pods per plant and increases yields come harvest time. There's a good chance that some of you could cut back on soybean seeding populations and get the same yields while buying less seed. Now, I know you're probably saying, that sounds a little strange coming from a seed company, but the proof is in the pudding. Not really in the pudding. Where did you get that? Lunch. PFR data shows that every population planted early beats any population planted late. How was that? Think back to what we said about maximizing nodes. If we can increase spacing between plants in the row by dropping pops and get them in that vegetative stage longer, we increase nodes per plant. Keep in mind, we still need to be following recommendations on increasing seeding rates as we get later in the year. We have less time to create nodes, so we need more plants to maintain those nodes per acre. Let's talk about planting depth. Historical data shows us that planting depth differences can range as high as 20 bushels in corn and six bushels in beans. With today's prices, I mean, you're looking at $80 to $100 decision per acre right there. Consistent moisture and temperature should be the two biggest driving factors determining planting depth. Comparing depth to your first and second knuckle, that's not the best way to go about it. Following consistent moisture and consistent temperature, that applies no matter where you're farming. In fact, let's give Brandon a call down in Kentucky yeah. and get his input on this. Hey, Brandon, what's up? What's up, dude? Much, how are you? Oh, not too bad. A couple quick questions for you. Uh, we're here talking yep. about planting date. What's the time frame on, on you, Tennessee, Delta area, uh, thinking about planting? Yeah, the guys in the Delta, Tennessee area, they could probably start planting around March 14th. Uh, anytime after that, I'd say they're good to go. Uh, here at Henderson, we probably won't start until that last week of March or first week of and most years, it's the first week of April. Gotcha. How does planting depth play into that for you guys, especially maybe in those earlier planted plots that you guys are planting down there? So we accomplish two things when we get the seed planted at a good depth, and that's somewhere around an inch and three quarters to two inches on corn. We get it into a more consistent moisture, and we also have it in a more consistent temperature, and that all affects our emergence. We, our goal is to try to get as many plants up in that first 24 hours as we possibly can. And by getting it into good moisture and good consistent temperatures, we'll get it even an emergence as possible. Well, thanks. That's all we needed. You know, just ask a couple questions, reiterate a few things for us. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. Yep. Thank See you, you, bud. See you. See you. Bye. To wrap things up, here's some final considerations to make when planting early. Consistent moisture and temperature. Heavy rain. Sidewall compaction. We all know we plant in a little bit of adverse conditions. Crusting. Late spring frost or even snow. We had some little bit of experience with that last April, didn't we? We sure did. A lot of those sound like negatives though, so surely there's some positives getting out there oh. and planting early, right? We can look forward to earlier pollination, shorter plant height, increased harvestability out there in the field, reduced lodging, increased nodes and soybeans like we talked about. We can reduce our drying costs, getting that corn dried down a little bit more before we get in there and harvest it. More GDUs available to those plants for growth throughout the season. And also, my favorite, earlier harvest potential. It means we can get done sooner, and we can enjoy our winter vacations that much sooner. I love going to the beach. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope you guys got a little bit of information out of this video. We'll see you on the next video. 
Let's do it again. I'm gonna run out of pudding. <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or full. <laughs> is it is it good? Yeah, it is actually pretty good. Okay.